Okay, this is a Casio DG10, and the issue I've got with it is, as you can hear, it plays all the strings fine, but when it comes to the fretboard, it is only the top string. This second string works a little bit, but it suddenly just goes off, and then the rest of the strings you're getting absolutely nothing at all. So the plan is to take it apart, have a look inside, and uh, yeah, just see what's going on with it, see if it's fixable or not. Yeah. So again, no matter what fret you're pressing there, you're just getting nothing. And the way this uh, guitar works, unlike a normal guitar where you would uh, tune your strings to different notes, this one literally relies on the bridge itself showing that a string's been pressed. Another issue with it, listen. Yeah, so that doesn't sound right either. Something loose in there. So I'm just going to speed up the video a little bit here, just because, again, this is just dismantling it. Had to use a pair of pliers. Normally it looks like a star key on, on that part, but star key or an allen key seems to do it. These are just normal crosshead screws in the back. At uh, this point here, I kind of thought that would be it. i just take this back plate off and uh, the neck should just come off, but no. No, for some reason it is just a plastic plate there. Um, sorry, a metal plate. It doesn't really do anything at all. So yeah, just removing all the screws just to have a look inside. It's the first time I've taken this apart. I did buy it as not working on eBay and um, the person I bought it from did say it was working. They took it apart, cleaned it, and when they put it back together again, it wasn't working. So um, so yeah, I kind of thought, chances are it might, might be fixable, might not, but price was okay for it. Uh, what's really frustrating is though, back in the day, I remember seeing one of these in a charity shop and I could have picked it up for £30 and that was the DG20 which also has the uh, MIDI input as well and at the time they were going so cheap I just didn't bother with it. Now a working version of one of these is, is crazy money really for what it is. But yeah without that fretboard working unlike a regular guitar where you could just tune the strings this one doesn't you don't need to tune your strings to any particular level or anything. It just literally relies on you pressing a string or moving a string and then hitting a fretboard at a particular area, and that's what gives it a signal back to, to play a sound. Yeah, this was odd as well. So on the uh, speaker area there, there was a load of uh, screws just, just on it, like just where the magnets obviously picked up while they'd been rattling about, and the magnets from the uh, loudspeakers just picked them up. So yeah, just uh, again, these are just little clips. Just need to push them together to pull the uh, printed circuit board apart. And you'll see it's uh, a little bit fiddly. I have to cut a little cable tie there. Yeah, just managed to get that apart, no problem. Now, there's two ribbon cables that plug into the end here for the fretboard. And originally, I thought maybe they had some kind of clip or something on them, um, but they are literally just pushing. So you've just got to pull them brute force it a little bit unfortunately um, good thing is they are different lengths on them ribbon cables so it was easy to um, to know which way to put them back in again these are two screws that actually hold the neck on and then when I move this ribbon cable you'll see there's two nuts as well which also hold it on so once I move my big old ham fist ham there there you go, and there's a little um, earthing cable on there by the looks of it. Something to ground it down, because that's a metal plate on the other side that comes off. So yeah, just remove this. That comes apart, and you can just pull the ribbon cable through. 
That's it, perfect. Move the body out of the way, and then we just look with that. Now, so listen to this. There's a the metal plate coming up, fantastic. Yep, so now, to strip this down, a couple of little screws there just to take the uh, to take the headstock off. Again, that all looks in fairly decent condition, so I don't really need to do anything with that. It's holding the strings fine. Um, so on the actual fretboard itself, at the end there, there's two little screws that hold it on. Now the rest of this, so as you can see here, I'm just pulling the membrane off. Just because at this point, this first time I've taken this part, just pulled it off nicely. There was a little tear at the end of it, but not done by me. It looks like, again, where the previous owner's taken it apart. They've obviously ripped it a little bit, getting that end part off. So, But the actual printed circuit board itself is literally just stuck on with double-sided sticky tape. So again, it's a case of just prising it apart from the back. A little bit tricky, because again, obviously, it's been stuck down for a while. So... You can see I'm having to really kind of give it a little bit of force. I don't want to give it too much just in case I snap the uh, board itself, but it does come away eventually. That's it off. And that's what was making the noise. So what they've done, they've just basically put a, a, a weight in there, which is obviously to just give it a bit more of a quality feel and to give you... Otherwise, if it was just an empty plastic head, uh, it would just feel a bit a bit funny, really, compared to a regular guitar. So them screws that I found on the loudspeaker are from this. This is why this is floating about. So I just put them screws back in again. So one of the um, one of the holes was ruined. The one closest to the uh, body there just just completely gone. So just giving this fretboard a bit of a clean up again it's just contacts and a membrane really very simple there's some chips three chips on the back which I'm guessing are controller chips it looks like when I was taking this apart it just looks like all that had happened was one of the uh, clips wasn't in properly I'm, I'm just cleaning this up just because I've got it open really I thought might as well doesn't hurt but yeah it just looks like one of the uh, one of the pins wasn't in properly you see on the back there the controller chips so again the fun part is then putting this back together again the good thing is to locate it at the end where the two uh, bolts are there is a there is a kind of like dip in the uh, in the rubber so you know where to line it up which is quite handy but again because it's almost like a complete membrane if you you're out slightly it wouldn't make much difference Again, this was a little bit of a fiddly job, especially with that side part missing, as you can see. Because again, I, I, I could have glued it, I could have done something with it, but for now I just wanted to see if I could actually get it running. So, just put that other little part back in and it, it's holding in there fine. It, it clips around the corner, it's not... And when it's all together, you don't even really notice it. So yeah, just pushing it back down now. Just making sure it's all sitting in there nice and firm as well. So again, I've had to lift it a few times just to make sure. Because again, when you're pushing it down, the rubber has a tendency. It wants to come away from the side. So you've got to lift up the printed circuit board a bit. Clip it around the circuit board again. Push it back down. So again, just getting this down is a little bit tricky. Just putting the um, screws back in the end here. And again, this took several attempts to do because, again, when you lift it up, it has a horrible tendency of trying to lift up a little bit further. So it is a case of you just got to literally flap it back, put the screw in, and I hope for the best. Like, it can be a little bit fussy, especially when I had that broken part at the end. Um, if I was going to take this apart again, what I would have done is probably not take that membrane off first, just literally pull the whole thing up. Now I know how it comes apart just pull it all up as one section because potentially you could rip the membrane I'm guessing this is what the previous owner has done um, so now we're all happy with that just going to put it all back together again just feed the cables through here that's 
see it going. You got it. You got it. Yes. That's it. So, got the cables through there. Put that back on. Back on through. And then just get these uh, nuts back on. Again, what would have been uh, a couple of screws there. Yeah, and just getting these nuts back on, making sure I put that little grounding strap back on there again. Now, the other slide one was a little bit tricky. As you can see, rather than actually going and getting a spanner for it or an adjustable, I decided I was going to do this with a pair of pliers because I'm probably going to have this apart again anyway, but that that thread was a little bit tight, so it wasn't cross-thread, but it was just, I don't know, again, with the previous owner, when I've taken it apart, it's cross-threaded it or something, but it did feel a little bit tight. Ideally, what would have been nice is just to run it through, put a die on it, and then put a tap on it. But again, it went down. It's just, as yeah, I say, just a little bit tight. But it tightened all the way to the bottom. Uh, yeah, so just need to plug these cables back in. And as I say, there's no way you can you can mess it up. They're only going in one direction, and they're two different sizes. So, so fairly straightforward. Just clip the ball back down put it back together again and um, what I've done here I just put a couple of screws in just to hold it together for now just so I could put it together and test it so yeah just a couple of screws going in yeah put that little metal plate back on as well again the only thing I can think for that little metal plate is probably just to give it a little bit more strength there because even though these are just plastic um, strings, it's obviously going to have a little bit of tension and it is all plastic. So it probably just helps it really, so it doesn't doesn't snap in half. <coughs> putting the strings back together, oh yeah, just putting the headstock back on. Just, yeah, just got to put each individual string through, clamp it at the top, and just, uh, yeah, just testing the tightness. Again, they can't be too loose, otherwise it won't activate at the end there, so they've got to have a little bit of tension to them. Um, not too much, because again, they're only plastic strings, so chances are they'll just they'll just rip out if you give them too much. But again, just so it's, it's the comfortable way to play. And as far as guitars go for playing, the one thing I will say is it will definitely... Because if you don't hit that fretboard properly with a normal guitar where you're using the strings, you don't actually have to push your finger all the way down to the fretboard to get the right note. With this one, you do. If you don't, it will just play a generic sound. So there, just testing the strings again just to make sure we've got some sound. We have. And now when I test it, you'll hear that it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Brilliant, we are talking 1980s kind of synth technology here. At some point in the future, I'm hoping I can actually uh, fit a MIDI controller to it. I've seen something online, but as I say for now, I'm just happy that it's working. As you can hear now, these higher notes. You can actually hear they're playing now. Whereas before, you were just getting the same sound all the way down. Now it's actually registering on the board so yeah looks like the fix is good happy days yeah just to give me a little bit more just thought I'd try a different sound out to make sure that's all working and yeah, all good and this is my full guitar ability right now so perfect, see you in the next video